Dear audience, we would like to shed some light on some of our Bengali writers' works. Um, they are all Canadian, but they are writing in Bengali so that we can communicate our messages, our real-life scenarios, uh, and there are definitely a lot of messages for the community, all over the communities, because you know, we share the similar values, vision, mission um, as South Asian. No matter we are Bangladeshi, Indian, or Pakistani, Punjabi, or Bengali, I think we are pretty much similar in our views. So I hope uh, we will today discuss about the writing of these writers and you will know more about it. So before we go, um, I'm gonna tell briefly about uh, the first writer with me here, Jakaria Muhammad Moinuddin, a little bit about him and then we will discuss about his book and then we will do the same with the others. So Mr. Jakaria Muhammad Moinuddin, um, this man with intellect has actually multiple hats. Uh, so, uh, he completed his bachelor's and master's from Bangladesh Agricultural University. However, coming to Canada, he's a different person. He graduated again. Uh, he earned a social, uh, social worker um, degree and then he is also registered one. So, he's also working in social sector. He has agricultural knowledges and also they also formed an organization with some of his Beng Bangladeshi friends, which is HOPE, and they are working for homeless people and mental health. I hope he will tell us a lot about himself. Thank you. So, Mr. Moinuddin. Jakaria Bhai. Thank you. Yeah. If you tell us briefly about um, what motivated you to write in, uh, I mean, write for this sector, the social awareness, the homelessness, why did you choose this subject? Thank you, Tasmina. I hope the sound is well. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, you can see I have three books here. In Bangla, Bengali version, it says shop near immigration. I mean, dream immigration, homeless, and Josna mentioned. So your question is what motivated me to write this sector? Yes, you are absolutely right. As you already told that my educational background started with agriculture, I mean farm, which is very rural, our roots, our root levels, I have experienced with livelihood of farmers and then it motivated me to write something about our culture, our Bangladesh, about, you know, uh, those things. And especially Shopner immigration, you know, all of we who are sitting here, all of us have our own agenda, how we came here. It's a lots of series of experiences that we achieved, my one as well. At the same time, I was working at the beginning settlement councillor, so I saw some, in terms of social lens, some struggles, you know, uh, that feel new immigrant people. That motivated me right down in this social sector. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks for sharing. So. Uh, he is also a writer who got recognition from our local MPP and also uh, he wrote a lot of books. Among all of those books, I would actually uh, want to ask you a few questions first about your book that you just mentioned, um, Homelessness. So as you said that you are now working as a social worker and that motivated you to write this book, right? If I'm right, okay. So um, as far as I remember when I was reading your book, you um, you're the protagonist of the book was Mijan Rahman, right? Yeah. And uh, you uh, kind of uh, pictured him as a homeless people, but in real life, like I know you live in Toronto, when you go to Toronto downtown or if, when you meet the homeless people. So demographically, do you actually see the picture of our community as a homeless person? Because I'm actually proud to share that. I'm also working in the field, in the social work and the health worker sector, but I barely see any people from our, these communities who are here today. So why did you pick Mijan Rahman as the protagonist instead of any white or black or other uh, people who we meet here? 
Actually, one little correction. It should be Nizamuddin. Mijanur Rahman is my third one, which is uh, Josna mentioned. Yeah, however, it's so, still yeah. a name from our community. So, anyway, whatever ABCD, the main character, central character is Nizamuddin, who has some, you know, PTSD things, which was not identified in, you know, our back home culture. We are not much aware about our mental healthness. You know, so mental health starts at the very beginning of our life that we don't notice, we don't fail to get noticed. Gradually, it triggers when we it, it exposed to several, you know, components in my, in our surroundings. So, when actually I was exiting from Highway 404, I saw one gentleman. Who, who, who has the, who bearing the placard says homeless, you know, and say help me. So then I was just digging more and more cognitively and saying what, what should be, this person may have some history that we don't know, you know. So in our culture, our Bangladeshi culture, I don't know other things, we sometimes we think about we have lots of myth, we lots of stigma about homelessness. Once we see home, homeless people, it come up, oh, they are lazy, they have mental health issue. They get government benefits day after day. This is our money, you know. So, however, they have huge things, you know, submerged under the, you know, uh, in depth that we don't know that I try to bring these things in my book. So this is, don't think that we have Nizamuddin now, you know, in the street. No, it's a misconception. As of now, we can say that I didn't, we, we are not experienced any South Asian homeless in the street. However, it might be a wake-up call. Who knows what's coming next? If we are not noticed yet, those components related with homeless, it may, it may be. So th that's why I think that it should be written. We should know this. Yeah. You know, and we should aware about these things. That's amazing, uh, Jakaria Bhai. Uh, thanks a lot. So we will come back to you again. Now I would like to go to Mr. Shujit Kushumbal, who is also a very known uh, writer of our community. So uh, he definitely was born in Bangladesh. Um, he is a member of Margaret Attitude Society and International Yes Society. So he is still doing research on different writers. However, his background was from finance. So, uh, Jakaria Bhai, uh, okay, sorry, yeah, Shudita, if you just uh, tell your audience that what motivated you to research on um, so many writers, whereas your background is from finance and you worked in finance all your life, right? Excuse me first, uh, in fact, my background is not finance. I studied English literature yeah. in Bangladesh. I mean, but, sorry to I, interrupt. I mean, I wanted to say, like, you are working oh, in the field. Yes, I am yeah. now working. Mm -hmm. yes. Now yeah. I am working in finance. So, yeah. so your question is like, how... Yeah, how can you keep balance of both your professional life and your interest? I know that, sorry, I didn't share this information. He definitely did his honors master's from English literature. He definitely had a very strong background for writing those materials. However, he's working in an economic world, but he's dealing with the words. So my question is numbers versus the letters, the alphabet. So how you keep balance for both of those? Thank you very much. First of all, I should say, I, I can see some of you now, you, you are turning the pages. In fact, uh, my name is not here. Uh, our thinker, uh, we, we say him philosopher, Akbar Hussain, he was supposed to be here, but he is busy somehow today. So my captain, Subrata, he told me to be here. So that does not mean I am replacing Akbar Hussain but I am representing Akbar Hussain. Thank you very much. So her, qu her question was how I am adjusting. In fact, I get pleasure in any work. You know, in the karma yoga, in the background, there is the beauty. Beauty lies in the background and I derive pleasure from that beauty. So, this beauty is interconnecting me in between 
literature and finance. Thank you. Wow, that's an amazing answer. So, um, we know that Sudhir Kushumpal has a lot of uh, arenas to focus on, like he is doing a lot for our community. And uh, when, I, when I'm mentioning our community, it means the whole literary world, not only our Bangladeshi or South Asian community. For example, his volunteer experience includes editor at the Little Magazine Anjali and Neil Komal since 2009 and 10. Uh, but he's writing research articles, he's also writing research articles on um, Canadian literature and English literature. Uh, in newspapers and blogs, he has translated poems of Yeats, Shelley, Atwood, and others. Reviewed books by different authors in Bengali. Doing research on the works of Margaret Atwood, he's also a Bengali poet. He's an author of a book on William Butler Yeats' poetry in Bengali language. He talked about Margaret Atwood's work at the Toronto International Festival of Authors in 2021, talked on T.S. Eliot, Margaret Atwood, and world literature on NRB television channel as well. So my next question is to Didda. So, um, why did you actually start researching on these particular English poets? Thank you very much. In fact, first while as a student, I was reading the critical essays of T.S. Eliot. I found that he attended the funeral uh, service program of W.B. Yeats. You know, W.B. Yeats died in 1939. And he, T.S. Eliot was lecturing in 1940 and delivering his memorial speeches. He told about Yeats as the greatest poet of the contemporary time. That is the first reason. Number two, you know, today we are representing South Asian stream. I'm now feeling proud of being part of this stream because one South Asian poet became the first non-European winner of Nobel Prize in 1938. Sorry, in 1913. He was Rabindranath Tagore and he is from South Asia. I am feeling proud of him. What happened before getting Nobel, when he went to the residence of Rothenstein, the photographer in London, he was introduced to W.B. Yeats, and W.B. Yeats wrote the introduction for Gitanjali. After that, you know Devabratu Mukherjee? Devabratu Mukherjee, he translated one uh, play of Rabindranath Tagore that was post office, that is Daghar, the story of Amol. And in that also, W.B. Yeats wrote introduction for this play. Not to, he didn't stop here. He staged this play in Dublin theatre. He directed the play, he wrote the introduction, all these things. So after doing all these things, I found that there is not a single book on W.B. Yeats, neither in India nor in Bangladesh, who did a lot for Tagore, who did a lot for Bengali culture and literature. And that, I, I, in fact, I felt obligation that, okay, as because I am thinking to write a book, first I will write the book on W.B. Yeats. And I should inform you that Tasbina Khan, he, sorry, she reviewed my book. Now she is interviewing me. So she knows everything. Still she is questioning me. I don't know. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was funny. But I just let you, I just give you a chance to share with our audience. They didn't read the review maybe. <laughs> Anyways, so now we are going to our third um, participant today, Chayan Dash, who is a poet. And um, you see he has a book in his hand. Chayan, do you want to show the book? Yeah. So... <laughs> 
To, t to tell something about him, Poetio Andash was born in Bangladesh. He studied economics and did an MBA at the University of Dhaka. He also obtained an MA degree in financial management from the University of Ulster, UK. Before coming to Canada in 2011, he was serving the government of Bangladesh as a deputy secretary. So from his childhood, he had a keen interest in music and literature. In his boyhood, he started writing rhymes and were published in local and national magazines. He was an enlisted singer. Are you gonna sing today? <laughs> okay, really? never mind. If you want, you can. Uh, never mind, if yeah. my audience allow me. Okay, so he was an enlisted singer in radio and television. He was also a newsreader and presenter on Radio Bangladesh, so you see that we are having talks the whole day. Maybe we will request you to sing a couple of lines for us. <laughs> what do you think? Sure. Yeah, you see? Okay, so first um, let him, I'll let him recite some of uh, his poems, and then maybe we will hear his song. Would you mind to uh, read a poetry from your book, any poem? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, First of all, uh, I like to express my thanks and gratitude to the organizer of this fantastic festival and uh, allowing me to be a part of that. And so, um, my dear August audience, with your uh, permission, I am going to recite one of my poems. And interestingly, uh, you have heard a lot of things about the WBH, the contribution in the, uh, making our Tagore's literary work renowned worldwide, WBH. And today, I'm sorry, it's a, <laughs> excuse me, uh, my, a few poems has been translated by another uh, uh, panel member, Shujit Kushumpal, today. So as because I know the audience will not understand Bengali, I am going to recite um, of my two poems in English, translated by Shujit Kushumpal. All credit goes to him. Okay, uh, just my privilege and honor to uh, recite my poem uh, in Bengali first, if few of uh, you understand. The name of my poem is Ami Parini, means I couldn't do in Bengali. Meg hoye ami bulate parini chaya, bachate parini tafto rode, dokto tomar muk. Bari dara hoye jorate parini jol, jorate parini, trishna klishto, shushko tomar book. I'm reciting in English. Not I could. I couldn't bring shadow for you that cloud can to save your face burnt in the hot sun. I couldn't pour water that the stream of rain can to quench your chest dry and thirsty one. I couldn't sing in tune that a bird can to walk with you with the rhythm on the way. I couldn't bloom at dawn that a flower can to spread the palmy smell in the morning display. I couldn't illuminate the flame that a lamp can to give you light by shining in the dark. I couldn't tell by tongue that one in love can. I love you with a poor terror spark. My heart still preserves you as a secret content. At the end, you become a star in the evening event. Wow, that's, that's mesmerizing. Fantastic. <laughs> Very nice voice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, Chanda, my first question to you. Um, so, I, I, don't, I don't understand poetry a lot. Uh, my bad. But so, for my understanding, um, you said a lot of I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. So, can you tell our audience a little bit about that, like, why is there a melancholy tone or why so many frustration or couldn't? Why not you are more hopeful? 
everyone should be uh, optimistic. We hope for the best, but at the same time, we should be prepared for the worst. And everyone's life, everyone cannot do everything in his life or her life. So, and one thing, don't take what is written in my poem personally, but take it emotionally. Emotion arises in our mind many times under different circumstances. Say for example, I'm here, I'm sitting here, I have got a chance to uh, talk to you, to recite my poem in front of a very distinguished audience. You don't know what is going on inside my, me, right? So, it is actually the expression of emotion. Maybe I could do to say, to walk with, to sing, to hear for many ones, but maybe I am still dissatisfied for not doing this for a particular one that can be. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, I'm coming back to Jakaria Bhai again. So, uh, in your book, Shopner Migration, um, I think you mentioned about a couple who were very successful in their career and they were every opportunity in their back home. However, they, uh, they had a challenge in their life, which was with their autistic child. However, when they immigrated here, there were more challenges to settle. There were a loss of barriers. Um, but you also mentioned about some successes. So when I was reading your biography, then I also seeing similar stories, like you struggled and then how you settled here and then what happened. Uh, do you want to uh, share any of your personal experiences that motivated you to write this particular book? Thank you, Tasmina. You knocked my heart. <laughs> so basically, uh, in my book, Shopner Immigration, I mean the dream immigration. Yeah. So it's, we can say it's in two parts, invisible two parts. So part one, the main main uh, characters, Pithi and Tomal. They both of them had good job, good career, well established in Bangladesh. But they came here as an immigrant, still leaving their jobs okay with their. So this is my things that I want to tell people that once you come to settle here, you have to be determined. You have to have full determination. If you put option, then it will be trouble. Every time see, you can think, no, I will go back. No, I can't cope with these things. I have to go back. So same thing happened in my book, part one, because they came from Bangladesh, leaving their job like that, and then they had everything, their lens, they, they see negative thing, bad weather, no job, no English, I mean, no Bengali, so they have to go, no choice. They can, this land is not for them. However, in second part, when they quit their job and they determine that, yes, I have no choice, like swim, you know, when we learn swimming, how our parents do, they just throw out us in the water, you know, then we need to, we, then we learn automatically to swim, to escape, to get rid of those struggles. So this same thing happened here. When this Tomal Titi came here, and this time they researched lots of things, lots. They have social work background, my Titi, the uh, lady character. But how many sitting here, we know that there's a very beautiful program in Ryerson University, it's called IESW you know, like social work background. I personally, I have, this very interesting. I did social work job in Bangladesh. You know how NGO works. The NGO works with farmer, root level, rural level, but I don't have social work education. I have agriculture education. With agriculture education, I went, I work in hand in hand with farmers. But here, when I looked for same social work job, they said, no, no, this is not for you. You, you come with agriculture education, you have to have social science education. And I can't have access IESW because I don't have social work, I don't have sociology. So I had to go back to Humber College starting from two years diploma. I completed two years diploma, then I shifted my diploma to four years honors, you know. So then I have bachelor in social science. So the way you asked, when I first come in Canada, you asked me to 
you know, tell more about my personal own experience that I try to illustrate in my book. I was building, me and my wife, we did work building superintendent, not full, assistant building superintendent. We were happy with that because we need not to pay any rent, no bills, free rent, you know. At that time, when I picking garbage, when I cleaning elevator, I was thinking that, yes, inshallah, once upon a time I will do something. And yes, I did it. I did it. Well, that's a success story. So that uh, will motivate a lot of people. So what do you think, um, like uh, the message of your book contains some barriers and some, some successes, some pros, some cons. However, so comparing all the sides, so what would you suggest the new generation who are still at your back home? Do you recommend them to come or stay there? Actually, th this is another thing that, you know, every now and then, we, the people here living longer time, we need to handle these things. People, from, we are receiving calls from Bangladesh saying, Jakaria bhai or Jakaria uncle, I, you know me, I have well set job here. I have, you know, very nice career here. But however, I'm planning to immigrate in Canada. Could you, what do you think, what is your suggestion, you know? And again, not only that, my children wants to go there for international, you know, student taking education. I don't know, you know, about Canadian uh, things. Could you please tell us? It might be temporarily or permanently like immigration. So we are, every day in our life, we are facing these things. So these things is actually, is a dilemma that I put in the book. I never suggest, I, I have, I never have a bottle of medication in my book you will have the medication and then you will get rid of all things and you can say, yes, this is the land for you or no, this is not the, no. What at best we can do, we can, we can provide some information to you. So this is about Canadian weather, you know, this is about Toronto weather. This is about latest education, unemployment, employment information here. You have your degree, you have your education, you have your career there, but this is not Bangladesh. You have to have, you have to galvanize your education and the way I did. So if you cope with this, you, if you are ready for that mentality, welcome. We can have better life here, but again, it varies person to person. We cannot put all things in a single box. We can only share our things and then the people, this is their responsibility who are asking questions. So they can browse from their own way, own mechanism, and they can find their answers. I, I think I gave you an answer. Yep, absolutely, thanks. Um, so we are gonna go to Mr. Sujit now. So, Mr. Sujit, so among several of your book reviews, I remember in 2017, the one you just mentioned, written by me. <laughs> so, the title of your book was Nario Nikunju. So, uh, and when you named the book uh, in Nario Nikunju, so can you uh, tra translate the title for our readers, like what you wanted to mean by that name? Thanks, Tasmina. The book's name is uh, in years, or I should say first in Bengali, Yers Ser Kobitai Nari O Nikunjo. In English, Woman and Home in the Poetry of W.B. Yers. So, most of you, I think, you know Nari woman. In fact, W.B. Yeats, before I go into the depth, I should say about him, he was born in Ireland, sorry, in England. But originally he is from Ireland, and as because his father was an artist and member of the elite society in London. So, he was living with his father in London. He was raised there. But he wanted to know that 
the English government, the British government, they made the Ireland their colony for about 700 years. And the government erased all the Irish history from their history book. And he was feeling to do something for motherland and he started his career as a freedom fighter for the Ireland. So at the age of 23, he first met Maud Gon. Maud Gon, she was born in England, raised in France, but fought for Ireland. These ladies sacrifice for Ireland, there is no limit. Anyway, a lot of history is there. So when years met Maud, he became mad for Maud and started his journey. And this journey is like that. He used Maud's imagery as the symbol, as the love for the motherland. After that, he loved many women, Florence Farr, the actress, Olivia Shakespeare, the writer, Maud Gone, the revolutionist, Isolde Gone, her daughter. And finally what happened, she fought for the country, she got it. Ireland was liberated. She loved the women and she owned them, owned their heart. And finally, he got both women and motherland. So I decided to keep the name as Nari O Nikunjo. In fact, his homeland. Thank awesome. You. Th that's a nice explanation. So uh, people say that uh, WBEX was the last romantic poet. So do you agree and why is it so? Like why is it, that was the last one? Uh, in fact, people say it's right. Even the poet in his biography, he also identified himself as the last romantic. As a layman, uh, before I studied literature, I, I thought the people who know how to do romance, he is romantic. But that is not the correct one. Romanticism is a genre in modern English poetry. There are a lot of genres, you know. Neoclassicism, romanticism, all these things. According to the year, these are divided. In fact, Modern English literature started its journey from 1350 and still today this is the modern era. In 1798, historical experts, they identified that romantic period started from 1798 and it was up to 1937, that is the year of Queen Victoria who came in power. So from 1798 to 1937, these 39 years working or writing is known as the work of romantic writers. But why? What is the characteristics of romanticism? You know, before romanticism started, the period was Neoclassicism. Up to that, the people, they are writing what? Only just about, you know, fantasy, you can say exotic tales, death, uh, paradise, hell, darkness, night, little star, twinkle, twinkle, all these things. They did not dare to cross the line of religion. They could not cross the, that, or I should say, they could not beyond the scientific truth. But from 
eight Coleridge, you know, the uncle of Romantic period, and the father is Wordsworth. So both this father and uncle, they published one book that is Lyrical Ballads. So in Lyrical Ballads, they started to think for this criteria. So I am first narrating what are those criteria. Roman, in Romanticism, it is the, what I should say, it is the, you know, celebration of imagination, melancholy, feeling, emotion, childhood, glorification of womanhood, adoration for nature, nature's wildness, wildness, power, or reincarnation, spirituality, rebirth, soul, all these things. If you cut one human body, you don't see any soul or mind. But from romantic period poets, they started to tell about soul and all these things. So, William Butler Yeats started his career as romantic poet and finished his career as a modern poet. And he did everything to fulfill all the criteria. This is in short. Thank wow. you. Wow. I just remembered my first class in the English literature <laughs> on my bachelor's courses. I just remembered the lecture and this lecture pretty much similar. Is there anybody else who are aligned with my opinion? <laughs> like, what do you think? So detailed. And how can you remember so well? I'm surprised. Is it, should I call you encyclopedia, Wikipedia, or what? No, no. In fact, Subrata, <laughs> Subrata made, he compelled me to go, to, to go back, to go in reverse, to read the, all the textbooks again, because <laughs> <laughs> this is South Asian. The first year, he told, please, do it. And I did it. I, not that I did it, I tried to do it. Thank you. Amazing. I think um, there were so many hard words, so we need to soothe our nerves right now. How about listening another poem of Chanda? First thing, uh, you know, uh, the person who has taken the responsibility of translating my poem, and definitely, uh, at least, I am not that good, but I can identify the good person. He's so good, so good. And uh, I believe that he could touch my emotion and could manifest my feeling in translation because it was not a translation, yeah. just a word-to-word -word translation. It was a translation of my heart. Yeah. So, once again, I <laughs> like to thank Mr. Srijit Kushumpal. Uh, Chanda, you named your poem, Srithir Uthone Mon Barbar Lutuputi Khai. What does it mean if you tell to our audience? Uh, actually, uh, I don't know whether because of my limitation in language, I cannot express what I feel. But I think when we get older, our uh, future, if you measure the length of a, of a lifespan, then our future, I, I don't know how long I will go. But I have left my future and I can measure the length. So everyone's, when we go get older, uh, future is uncertain, unknown. So, but which is, what is known that is my future, uh, sorry, my past. So everyone as a human being, uh, especially we like to think about our past, if, whether it is uh, golden or silver, or full of sorrows or pains, whatever. But we like to remember our uh, past. And it comes, it comes to our door, knock at our door, whether we want it or not. Especially when we are alone, we are within ourselves. That's why uh, from that uh, feeling, I... Uh, try to write this point. Well, there are both sides of it. Like there are, there could be some memories which are very uh, happy memories and there could be some sad memories. 
So what you what you love to re, re, I mean think over and over on like do you want to recall your those happy moments or rather or do you want to think about the worst things and want to stay away from those uh, so that they can't repeat again? Uh, definitely, outside of this uh, uh, this auditorium, you also <laughs> attacked me why uh, all. Uh, sad stuff actually coming into my writing. Yeah, I don't like uh, sad you. stuff. Yeah, uh, but I believe that everybody will be with me and our great poet uh, Shelley has uh, said this word that our, our sweetest songs are those that tells our saddest thought. So actually we uh, forget our uh, good memories uh, fast but which we cherish in our mind and which survive which live long, that is our sad moment. That is my belief. I don't want everybody should agree with me, but uh, I'm just uh, reading out my, that poem. Uh, one second, sorry. I'm stealing again time from you. So after this poem, I would request our audience to ask him questions regarding his poem, or if you want to ask anything about the happiness or the uh, memories or anything that he is going to read it loud now. Yeah, well, sure, if you want, you definitely, because he loves to sing. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, <laughs> should I? <laughs> Why not? A few lines. Maybe oh, it is a, um, okay, uh, if you allow me. Uh, I want to sing a song in Bangla, but uh, it is a very uh, famous singer's song. You know, he is known as Hemant Kumar in India. Uh, Hemant Kumar in Hindi world and in Bengali community, he is Hemant Mukherjee or Mukhopadhyay. So I am uh, singing in Bengali. Ami dur hote to mare dekhe chhe Ar mug dhoe chokhe chhe thekhe chhe Ami dur hote to mare dekhe chhe Ar mug dhoe chokhe chhe thekhe chhe बाजे कीने कीने रीने जीने तो मारे जे चीने चीने मुने मुने को तो छोभी एक जे आर मुग धोए चुके जे थे के जे वाह एक्सेलेंट थैंक यू ओह वाव अनदर अनदर रिक्वेस्ट दिस इज दिस इज नॉट द फोरम फॉर सॉन्ग यू नो लिटरेचर इज अ पार्ट of culture and music is definitely another okay, point. I... <laughs> okay, okay, yes, let me remember one thing. Oni kotha jau je bole, kono kotha na bole, tomar bhasha bojharasha di chhi jolan juli. Wow. That's all. Thank wow. You. Thank you so much. We don't want to miss your points. You can't just stay. Okay. Back on Kobita. Okay. We are to fool. Feel free to share your opinion or if you have any other request. You got such a singer today. Okay. Uh, you said, I, I, in my uh, previous poem, I said, I don't do, I don't do, but yeah. now find some positive. Awesome. Film. We were waiting for that. Okay. <laughs> uh, the name of my poem is, I am in you. I won't offer, if you wish, I can bring down the moon from the sky. Damn the ocean, installing the Himalayas by pile your bun with some stars from the blue chain. Provide cloud in the sun, stream in the rain. I own to offer, if you wish, I can donate my life with bliss at no cost, keep the ore in oblivion to have you with dot, spoil the flowers by robbing the aromas emit, fill your heart, sniff the smell bit by bit. I own to offer, if you wish, I can renovate the Westland with flower, push the sorrow away, 
fill your heart with a merry shower, hold back time for both of us to become immortal, day and night with unbound love and happiness portal. I will say in obscure tone, like a bee, who wants to be there in the petal clee, even if gone is spring hold, I will hold the spring in the breast of your soul, with beauty and essence regally. Bloom you, my bud, into a flower eagerly. I would say what is said by stars and planets countless. You may not like it or leave me. I own to be groundless. I do blow like a crazy wind ever, run like the stream of a flowing river. The more I move, I feel infused in you. The more I feel destitute without you. Amazing, so touchy and like what a nice love poem. Okay, my next question is to Mr. Sujit. Uh, you mentioned in your book uh, about uh, William Butler Yeats and his writing pattern and like the central message, but those were not uh, the romantic, I mean, not romantic in the way of the way this poem, I mean, this flavor and that flavor was totally different, if I'm not wrong. You mentioned about platonic love, mostly uh, metaphysical. Uh, so if you can elaborate on those. Not, not, not clear. Uh, would you please... Uh... Like you, you wrote in your book that all the love uh, themes or poems or uh, the writings of yet were... Oh, spiritual love. Yeah, right, those were right. spiritual love, right. not the... Mm -hmm other kind that we are familiar with or most talked about. Right. So why he was so different and why, what was his view or his philosophy of writing? Okay. The main question is, I need to talk on spiritual love. In fact, before I talk about spiritual love, I want to clarify something about what is spirituality. It's, you know, I, I told before that if you cut one human body in the morgue, we can see only the body, no mind, no soul. But in philosophy, in literature, we can go beyond the physique, we can go beyond the body, we can see this world, neither all, everything. So, spirituality is the ability to recognize the belief or feeling that there is something greater than myself. This is the ability to recognize the feeling that there is one greater whole of which I am the part. And this greater whole is the cosmic. And this is the ability to derive pleasure out of your bodily desire without using your sensory organ. You can see if you, by closing your eyes, you can see. You can feel the test without touching something. This ability is known as the spirituality. Some of you are individually, each of you may vary with my sense, with my conception. It is very welcome in literature. So, this poet, William Butler Yeats, is a very, you know, his poet is, is an ambiguity. Sometimes we are confused what he is about writing about. For example, you know, 
you are a student of literature a leader and the swan what you saw we saw a swan raped one girl but in practicality is not possible in poetry he made it possible how some critics told in fact this poetry is about mod gone because william butler yeats proposed gone for marriage five times she, proposed five times yes. and every time he was rejected she, she he proposed but after third time she married the irish revolutionist magrid but still kept on proposing right <laughs> in fact this poetry about the raping not by not in between swan and the girl it's in between england and ireland england raped ireland so is very ambiguous i told you very confusing and always years was merging the image of mod with the liberation struggle for ireland another lady was there i should not say lady woman olivia shakespeare she was the writer she was first introduced to yeats in 1886 in 1889 he met mod gone and mod gone got all the heart what happened after 1889 years met again olivia shakespeare and after that meeting he wrote the poem in the poem we got your ring here clip of whose you can guess but olivia shakespeare left the apartment of years weeping she found that mont gone got the whole heart i have no room there she left at that time she was leading a separation from her husband she was living with her daughter dorothy shakespeare later on you know ezra pound ezra pound married this dorothy shakespeare and you know at the age of 52 when years married he married georgie who was 27 years junior to years and you know who is yet uh, georgie georgie was the daughter of olivia shakespeare's brother these, these are some like spider webs to me uh, excuse me <laughs> but the thing is like you know maud gone was proposed five times by yes she didn't respond but her daughter isolt again was in love with this man so these are kind of yes here is the beauty of spirituality you don't need the body yes was such a person he was able to get intellectual or spiritual orgasm just by his capacity his faculty of thought his faculty of spirituality was so strong what he was doing he was thinking of all the women and he was producing he was delivering he was conceiving and delivering conceiving and delivering without touching the body how then thus he became the greatest poet of this hobby is contemporary time here is his ability yeah i like the way you uh, you know one thing yeah. uh, in the uh, uh, during the honeymoon in the hotel 
Georgie was in the bed. Yeats was writing letter to his old gone. He's another beloved. Yeah. And out of all these things, Georgie accepted everything and Georgie delivered auto-creating. And you know, in the year 1925, one of the greatest creation in the world, a vision. 100% of those materials came from this lady. Again, sorry, this woman, Georgie. I remember how you portrayed the thing like for his poetry production, his poems production. So that lady, Maud Gunn, uh, performed as a father and uh, for those poems, uh, yet was just the mom to produce these poems. Am I right? Uh, am I clear? May, may yeah. I clear it? Yeah. In fact, when yes was repeatedly, frequently delivering his proposition to Maud Gone, Maud Gone told him that, you see, if you marry me, you can't write. So, my body is not for you. You should wait for my body. You will suffer and that suffering will make you deliver lot of poems. Your poems are, the, are my kids. You are conceiving, I am raising them. That was the conception. In, nine, in nine, uh, 1899 or 89, excuse me, I forgot the year, at night, there was a mystical marriage in between Yeats and Maud Gone. How? Maud Gone was dreaming in the dream she saw she was married to Yeats. The following day, she asked Yeats, did you see any dream last night? Yeats said, no, not last night. When I was taking nap in the evening, I got a dream. In the dream, you kissed me. Then Maud was confirmed, okay, our mystical marriage is done. So um, there is no second marriage. Thank you so much. Um, that was a very elaborated answer. Very nice. Um, my last question to uh, Mr. Jakaria. So we talked about your one book, uh, Shop Near Migration, and you also talked a little bit about the homelessness. So your another book is Josna Mansion. So where you talked about like money laundering, black money, illegal monies, those kind of thing. And we also found that at some point the, the man who started his business in Bangladesh did a lot of business, I mean in every sector. And then he became a real money maker. He came here, but ended up like being a worse dad. His daughter was hating him. So what's your central message? Like, did you want to focus on the um, money, black money, or the dad and daughter relationship, or what's your message for our audience? Thank you, Tasmina. You actually, uh, you know, you touch all several parts, key section in my book. I can re para, you know, rephrasing those things again, once again. So one, you know, I should say the word criminal. Any criminal when it starts crime, at the end, they want to rationalize their crime. You know, they can say that, oh, I did that because of this. You know, I, I have this reason, I had no alternative way, that's why I did that. So that is the one thing. So this Mijanu Rahman, that book is totally political, by the way. So it is not only in Bangladesh case, I heard that this is a global issue. Some of our criminals in our back home, it's, the, it's related with money laundering. They, take, they took, they stole public money. They deposited different, different international banks, Swiss banks, wherever it is. And then they finally settled different, different developed countries like Canada. So I, I, was, I was talking one of the character, definitely it is an imaginary character, but it happened in real life as well. So I remember just before COVID happened, there was a movement happened in my community at Danforth area. It was, I was 
uh, there with my family in the street against those sort of crimes. That led me writing that book. So as you mentioned that, there are different sections. I mentioned that how Mizanur Rahman, the central character, stole public money. But on the top of that, how he was isolated from his own family, like his hatred by his own daughter. So I priority this one as well. But in the long run, the main message is that when COVID strikes, so then these type of people, they, they see real life, how death, they come close to death and they frightened, they're scared, you know, that remind them, oh no, I, I, I have to die. So what will my, those wealth will protect me? They can't protect me. But again, it's too late. They're too late. So my main message is that those who are involved in those crimes, no matter COVID, no matter whatever coming up from our nature, natural punishment. Please, you know, just look at your crimes. Don't do it. Don't cheat on general public. You know, don't deprive their wealth. Don't take their money. We should, as a civil people, we should, you know, uh, keep them away from our social, everyday social life. That way we can protect those things, those terrible things. I think I make one. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm very sorry we are going a little bit over time, but this is the time when you go, you can actually ask questions. So, do you have any questions for any of our authors? Or you can also request John then for another song if you want. Any question? Otherwise, we are gonna call it today. I'm here and I'm prepared to sing. Right? <laughs> okay, thank you everybody for staying with us for this uh, cooperation and everything. Have a very great evening. Thank you.